anybody's coming into a dealership to buy a Ford vehicle, they want somebody who can relate. They want to talk to somebody who can relate to them and that can best serve their needs. For example, I want to have confidence that if I go to the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, that my local Ford dealer exemplifies the Ford guest experience. They, they should, be, should be able to relate to me in some way or know that the way that I like to buy a vehicle is a little bit different or the way that I may be using the vehicle may be a little bit different. Welcome to the Press One for Nick podcast. My name is Nick Limsdahl. My guest this week is Gerilyn Gaines. She is awesome. And there's a lot that I'm going to say in a short period of time. So get rolling because this is going to be a lot of fun. Not only is she a lot of fun, but she also has graduated with cum laude distinction from the University of Michigan Sociology. She is a Rochester Hills, Michigan native. She seamlessly bridges analytics insights with authentic engagement. As a pivotal force at Ford Motor Company, she has masterfully welded her skills in public speaking, guest experience, and business development to craft transformative dealer and customer experience that echoes across the globe. And she does a lot more. Without further ado, welcome, welcome to the Press One Minute Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Glad we're finally doing this. I know this is a long time coming and this is going to be well worth it for all the people that are listening. The one thing that I really want to get started off is... sure. You are the guest experience immersion manager at Ford. For those who don't know, what the heck does that mean at Ford Motor Company? Yes. Official title is Ford Guest Experience Immersion Manager. So what I do is I host events for dealers from across the globe, across the country, actually, for immersion. FGE is global for yes, we call it FGE. FGE is global, but I manage the U.S. events. So we yep. bring them all into Dearborn and have a training, two-day training on how to treat guests like family. Yeah, that's, that, that is the session. And we focus on our unique ownership experiences like four past rewards and online service reservation and remote experiences. And then one of my personal favorites, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So talking about why it's so important to have uh, people that work for you that reflect your local community. Yeah, that's what I'm doing these days. So let's touch on that real quick. Why is that so important to have it, to have it aligned with your local community and have it people like you who are aligned with your local community? Yeah, I think it's important because if anybody's coming into a dealership to buy a Ford vehicle, they want somebody who can relate. They want to talk to somebody who can relate to them and that can best serve their needs. And not to say that this isn't currently happening. I'm, we have a lot of dealers doing this really well. However, we've definitely seen that there is some opportunity, especially in the DEI space. For example, I want to have confidence that if I go to the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, that my local Ford dealer exemplifies the Ford guest experience. Maybe they don't have that many people of color in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, but they, they should, be, should be able to relate to me in some way or know that the way that I like to buy a vehicle is a little bit different or the way that I may be using the vehicle may be a little bit different. So yeah, that is why we're focused on it, just so we can better serve our current and future Ford guests. The American texture is changing. We went from mostly Anglo-Saxon majority, and now we have a lot more people of color, more, more women, and all of that in the marketplace. So yeah, a lot of young folks too, we like to focus on our millennials and our Gen Z buyers as well. Got it. Yeah, that makes complete sense. The one thing that you mentioned, and in, in you're very purposeful with it, is guests. Has that always been the case? Have you always called your people or your customers' guests? No, we actually made that shift in June of 2022 from going from just customers being transactional, impersonal, mechanical to guests that it's more like personal and the caring services and just just an experience that you feel like you fit in or that this dealer or this dealership cares about you enough to bring you along this purchase journey, but then continue on and build, not only build, but continue on the relationship throughout the ownership cycle. So if you want to turn in your lease within three years, want to make sure that they're going back to that dealer that gave them the Ford guest experience. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how does that mindset shift? Because just not that long ago, it went from where you were to that guest experience. How did that mindset work and and change from the consumer's perspective when that dealer had that mindset shift? Yeah, honestly, it's funny because we feel like we always say it, that the pandemic did it. But the pandemic really, a pandemic really 
really did it for us, right? Like I remember when we first entered into the pandemic and we were trying to have dealers sign up for mobile service. And we had a lot of reluctance with that. People were like, they're not, customers are not going to want this or whatever, but guests will, right? Guests will, guests want convenience. Guests don't want to have to leave their house in order to get their vehicle service or wait in a waiting room all day. Of course, they love the in dealership experience. However, convenience is key. I actually would live three minutes from my local Ford dealer but I work from home and I don't necessarily want to be in the waiting room and on meetings. So I opt in for pickup and delivery. They come, they, they give them the keys, they take it three, couple of miles down the street and they bring it right back. But it's just more convenient for me. But I also, I'm a DoorDash girl as well. So I like convenience and it really, I, the pandemic really accelerated that growth towards remote experiences and having easier ways to be serviced instead of the traditional ways and like a brick and mortar dealership. So the more conversations that we have, the more I get excited about that Ford uh, experience. And so yeah. can you maybe share with my listeners some of the key strategies that you guys are focusing on to enhance that guest experience? Yeah. So let me double down on, so four pass rewards, online service reservations and remote experiences. So four pass rewards, it's our rewards program. So it's like when you go to Panera or you go to Starbucks, the more you spend, the more perks you unlock. So we love that. And we have online service reservations where don't you want to book uh, your service appointment like you book a restaurant on open table, like making sure that it's seamless and easy and that everyone is providing an experience like that because that's what's expected from current guests. And remote experiences, like I mentioned, pickup and delivery. Also mobile service, right? Like having a, a service tech and a band come to your house and perform service in your driveway. Like never having to leave home in order to do the things that you need to do. We're just trying to make folks' lives easier. And then the DE&I part, we're really focusing in on this. Like I, I mentioned earlier, like I mean, the America respectfully is changing in terms of demographics and we need to be able to serve not just the people that we currently have as Ford guests, but future Ford guests as well. We want to be able to attract people to our brand by providing them with these very unique experiences. Yes, I appreciate that breakdown of kind of the key strategies. And I like how it's that holistic experience. It's not just the one thing. And you're saying, we're going to focus on this thing for the quarter, for this year. It's here's what we believe. Here's our foundational pieces. Now let's move this forward uh, collectively. What's the best way or how do you guys go about measuring that overall experience? Yeah, through Net Promoter Score. It's funny, we used to do a customer experience index, but we are shifting 100% to Net Promoter Score. So for the folks that may not know, what that is, it's the likelihood that a guest would recommend X brand or X dealership to their family and friends. So we used to be, we still care about the surveys. Like, how was your salesperson? How was your service person? Did you get your vehicle back in, a, in a, an appropriate amount of time? But we really want to know, would you recommend us? Would you recommend Ford? Would you recommend this dealership? Because that's how we're, me- that's how we're measuring advocacy now is through Net Promoter Score. So you, know, you have your detractors, your passives, your promoters. It's a purpose that really don't know. There's a scale of negative 100 to 100. So if you're, in the, if you're in the positives, you have more positive sentiment in terms of how your guests feel about your dealership or, or set experience. So it's actually measured by the percentage of detractors as subtracted from the promoters. So that is what determines your net promoter score. So yeah, that's how we're measuring it now is how likely are you willing to say that you love us and recommend us to your people? You know, one of the things that you had touched on maybe a few minutes ago was talking about the immersion experience. Yeah. When it comes to that, what changes have you been implementing based on the feedback received through the surveys that you received either from that NPS score and yeah. how have these changes improved that guest experience? Yeah. And it's funny. I get, I'm so passionate about immersion. The job that I do. I, 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 really, I can't tell. I can't tell. <laughs> I really do love it. It's funny. The other day I was with, with a new dealer, new Ford dealer. And he was like, you're really excited. I'm like, I love my job. Like I, ge- I genuinely do. So we implementing we survey feedback. So throughout our event, we actually survey our dealers and we send them text message surveys so they can rate us as they're going through the experience. So one thing that we actually learned is that dealers wanted to spend more time talking to, amongst themselves. Of course, we have it's a training class, right? So we have a lot of programming keynote speakers and workshops and all of that. But they were saying, we value most speaking to other dealers from across across the U.S. I mean, we'll have a dealer come in from Arizona and they'll be like, it's too hot in Arizona. We can't do mobile service. And then we'll have a dealer from Las Vegas. That's actually, if you use a canopy over your mobile service band, you can actually get those things done. 
and without burning up. And so for me, that's what's most meaningful is seeing them speak to one another and solve their own problems just through that conversation. Another thing that we saw was that they wanted us to spend less time selling them on our unique experiences. The best practices come from our recommendations, of course, but those come from dealers who are doing it. How can we teach other dealers to do it well? And we talk about being in different phases of the journey and we want them to get to that optimized and scale level. So yeah, those are some examples of how we've done that. They, and dealers, they are not shy. So every single time I ask to, they come to immersion. I'm like, how is it? And be honest with me. I can take it. I can take it. And I, I do. And we apply every single we have had this year. We'll have had 16 waves by the end of December. And yeah, so we it's we make changes every single wave from wave to wave. We're like, oh, small tweaks here, small tweaks there. And we also serve really great food. So that keeps people engaged as well. <laughs> I'm just showing up for the food. Heck with the training. Exactly. Right. It is really good. It is really good. And so tell me more about that. You said 16 waves. What does that mean? You have 16 waves of immersion experience throughout the year? Yeah. Yes. So 16, what was that? Sports speak. So waves are just like a moment in time, right? So that one and a half days, that's one wave. And then second, that's one wave. So yeah, we bring them into Dearborn. We start, we have a half day. That first day they fly in the morning. And then we have a nice reception for them. And then we come back and we're working. We're action planning all day that second day. We have a keynote speaker and then we send them on their way. When it comes to what you said, some of these naysayers that maybe you show up and they're like, oh, I don't, is, really, is. I don't want to get an emergent experience. What does that look like? Yeah. And then how do you get that buy-in? And then maybe what you said, you're getting feedback from a lot of these people, yeah. good, bad, or indifferent. And yeah. so maybe how are you? introducing the right people and saying, oh, you had a really good experience or a bad experience here. You think it's not going to work. Go yeah. talk to that group by Las Vegas. Yeah, no. And thanks for that. So the dealer that I, I was mentioning earlier that came into Immersion, he's generally, you don't know, you know, I don't want to be here. I don't believe in this. Blah, blah, blah. And then after day two, he's, oh my God, my, my eyes are open. Now he's like the poster child for mobile service. He's doing commercials. He's all on LinkedIn. He's on podcasts like this, talking about it. So that's like what's most meaningful to me. And then I'll see him Post on LinkedIn, he just, it's funny, he actually asked recently, had any other dealers had experience doing 410 instead of a five-day work week? And I was like, hey, actually, we've had some dealers come to Immersion and say that it's actually really boded well for them. And we've had folks come in and say that works well. People need flexibility, right? That's why we're doing guest experience. It's because people need flexibility. Like working moms, they need to be able to go pick up their kids from school. Or people that are in school, they need flexibility. Okay, like I'm balancing work in school or whatever it may be. We're just trying to make sure to, we're trying to take care. Of course, we're trying to take care of guests, but are we also are messaging how important it is to take care of your employees. Because you yeah. take care of your employees, they'll treat your guests better. Yeah, and, and my listeners are probably sick of hearing this, but uh, my analogy as a married guy is if mama ain't happy, nobody happy. And <laughs> I believe the same is true with your employees, right? If, yes. If you, you're a direct reflection of how you treat them uh, back to their customers. I would continue to say that. Uh, feel free to tell that to your, your people that show up in the emergent experience. But it's so true because if, if you're not treating them well, if you're not setting them up for success, if you're not helping them train to operation to operate on that experience that you're trying to hope, hope they deliver, then they're just going to go with the way that they've always done it. And the way that they've always done it isn't necessarily the best way, but that's yeah. just what they have their... And we all do, but we all have our, our horse blinders that we put in. Yeah. We run as hard, as fast as we can around that track. And, yeah. and hopefully we finish before we pass out. But exactly. The exactly. same is true with that, with training. So maybe touch on that. You have this day and a half, two days immersion experience. What does that experience look like through that dealership or their employees through that rest of that year? When dealers come to immersion, like I said, we work with them. We action plan on that second day. We continue to follow up. What are you doing after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days? We resurvey them. Like, hey, have you actually hired more diverse talent? How are you treating that? We action plan during immersion. We have this beautiful site and it just lives out. It lives out there. So what they'll do is they'll go back to the dealer and they'll be like, hey, these are all the things we committed to in immersion. Where are you with this? And they have the option to choose who's the lead. What are the next steps? What's the timing? So that's how we're going about it is with continuing the survey. That's what CX is all about. Like surveys, reviews, do these recommendations add value? Yes, let's implement. But yeah, yeah, that's how we go about it. 
Yeah. The more data that you have, the more action you can push forward to get you right. in the right direction. Yes. If you have, oh, I got a six on willing to recommend. What does that mean? And what should I do with it? And why did they give me a six? And how do I improve that? So mm. a lot of people don't actually pick the phone up and call that person right. who gave them that score. There's yes. oh, crap. I didn't meet my goal and I didn't hit my bonus. So a heck with that person. Dealers, they get surveys from guests. So we can see and they can see. We call them hot alerts. So they can see, okay, this experience did not go well for this guest. And so they have opportunity to call them and make it right. And then they can resurvey. So it's, they do get an opportunity to go back. If you're not going back out there, I recommend that you do. But they do have the opportunity to remedy. And one thing that we've learned too in immersion and, and we have a net promoter score session is that people who are disappointed are more likely to become promoters if you make it right with them. They may say, oh, I'm never going to come back. But then you call them and you're like, hey, this is actually how I want to handle this and come back into the dealership or maybe not. We'll come to you or, or what, whatever it needs, whatever that guest needs in order to be made whole, dealers have the opportunity to make it right. Yeah, I love that because people want to feel known and valued. And sometimes yeah. when they're just voicing their concern and they're maybe saying some things that they don't uh, potentially mean, uh, you pick up the phone and you actually hear them out. And you listen to what's not being said and you respond right. accordingly, maybe with some empathy and saying, you know what, that wasn't our expectations. And here's how we go about it. And here's what we believe in and why we believe it. And here's what we're going to do to make that out. And it's Most so important to take accountability, Nick. I have to say that because it's funny because the other day I was about to leave a, a negative review, not with the dealer, but with a, com with a store that I went into that is for years and years. They've always proven to have poor customer experience. Yep. And I went to go make the review and then I looked at all the responses from the reviews was like the owners doubling down on why that happened or that would never happen or I know my people didn't do that. And I'm like, can you just own it? Or just at least apologize, right? Like, that was our intent. However, we apologize for the way that we made you feel. Come back in and we can do a style day or, or, or whatever. But it was so interesting to see him not taking accountability. And I think that's so important in building relationships is you have to. If you mess up, make it right. It's so important. So important. Yeah, the, the one thing I would say too is that somebody gave me a negative, a negative review. I have to call them. And I would even change that mindset to say, I get to call them. I get the opportunity to make it right. And if exactly. I don't, then they're going to go with somebody else who's going to make it right. Or at least say they're going to make it right. And hopefully they do in the future. But right. focus on your customers because they're the ones that are that give you the ability to, to innovate and continue to grow as an organization. Yeah. Uh, without customers, you're just an organization that's sitting there doing nothing, not getting a paycheck. I agree. I agree. The last one I want to touch on a little bit is you and I are similar when it comes to going to pick up our groceries or get them delivered or going to DoorDash or trying to find ways to do more with less, uh, specifically with time. And so with changing customers' expectations comes the flexibility with like you and I and mobile services, how is Ford adapting to meet those evolving demands? I hate to have myself on the back and my team's up on the back, but bringing them to exactly, um, bringing them to immersion. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. It's changing their mindset, challenging them to think about what's the difference between a customer and a guest. If we have them do an exercise to them, what does it feel like to you? What does it feel like to you when you don't, when you don't belong? What are your expectations? I think so many people are like, oh, we're so busy or things are just too hectic. But it's like you juice. If, and, and, I, and I don't know, I'm, I've never worked in a dealership, so I have to sh share that. And I, I used to call on dealers. I know how hectic it can get. But if it take that little extra time with the guests, they'll rave about you and you'll bring in even more business. So I would say that our unique ownership experiences are focused on DEI. That really brings it all full circle. It's not something that we've done before. So I feel like we're really leading the industry in the way that we go about handling guests. We had to evolve. And I feel obviously devastating the pandemic. There, are a there was a lot of good that came out of it for our business in particular and how we, better, we, we go about better serving folks that we've had forever and folks that we hope to gain as guests. Yeah. All right. So I love that. If, if you're not consistently adapting, and trying to find ways to improve or change that guest experience and learning through that process. There's going to be things that you try and three, six, 12 months down the road, you're like, you know what? Based off that data, I don't think that we should be doing that anymore. 
Yeah. And that's okay. But continue to lean into that discomfort yeah. to try new things to, to differentiate on the experience. I, in most cases, when I buy vehicles, I feel like I'm being sold to. I don't feel like I have a guide that's helping me on the journey or that they're selling with me on the journey yeah. where they inform me and, and provide me with insights and maybe things that questions that I should have asked that I didn't yeah. help me through that journey and give me that peace of mind. I think the last, maybe not the last one, the time before I, I purchased the vehicle without actually showing, and then I showed up to buy it. But the whole time I was messaging that his manager or the guys, the person's manager via text just back and forth. They're like, whatever works for you. Like you tell me what's the easiest for you. And if you want to call, great. You want to text, that's great too. But yeah, meet the customer where they're at. And yes. in most cases, the channel of their choice and then reduce that friction on that journey. Yeah. Uh, so Good. I'm excited what you guys are up to. What are you most excited about here in the next 12 months? I'm excited about more immersions that we have uh, hundreds of more dealers to get through um, for 2024. And I'm just excited to see more folks, change more hearts. I always tell people like, that's what we're doing. We're changing hearts. And what I will say is to what people are like, oh, I'm not bought into this or I'm not bought into remote experiences or I'm not bought into DEI. I'm like, we have the receipts. These things yeah. work, right? Like these things work. Like there, there is research on this. It's not something to buy into or to not be, not buy into. Guests want convenience. Guests of all types, guests of all different races and genders and creeds, all of that. We need to be able to serve everyone and we should be welcoming everyone because Ford, it's funny because people are always like, what is it like to work with Ford, work at Ford? And it is very family oriented. Even though it's a family operated company, it is still very, it, it is that. And so we want to bring people into the fold and treat them like family. And that's our goal. So I'm looking forward to just more of that, changing more hearts and meeting more dealers. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to more of immersion and continuing to and elevate the experience, whatever that means for our dealers and continue to take their feedback to elevate it for dealers that'll come later on in the years. And hopefully we see NPS scores skyrocket because they've adapted the best practices. So that's what I'm looking forward to. So awesome. And, and I love you're just fired up. And I hope that your energy is aligned and, and they come out and they're like, man, she's fired up. And <laughs> fired up. there's yeah. something behind whatever's in that water that I need to figure out what, how do I have some of that? And so I can yeah. continue to fire it up. And so my guests can see that energy as well. Yeah. I What's love hospitality, way? Nick. I, I, I tell everyone, this is my dream job. I've always um, cared about hospitality since I was a little girl. Since I was five, people are like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I'm like, I want to own hotels and restaurants. So I'm just, it's from a little girl. So it's the hospitality aspect, DI, which is one of my passions and the dealers. It's just, it's been awesome. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the future. Yeah, this is great. I always appreciate our conversations. What's the best way for my listeners if they're like, man, this lady's awesome. She sends some really awesome nuggets. I wrote yeah. down a crazy amount of notes. How do they get all of you? Yeah, everyone, you can reach out to me. It's Geraldine Gaines at gmail.com. I'm also on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn.com backslash Gerilyn dash Gaines. So yeah, I hope to talk to some of you soon. Awesome. Geraldine, thanks so much. It's always a pleasure and uh, wishing you nothing but success and hopefully you're uh, changing minds and hearts one immersion at a time. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for the invite. This was great. I appreciate it.